Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today are Louis D'Souza and Anne-Marie Young. This is your Daily Dose of Happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. You know, guys, it's funny because when we do these shows, uh, I mean, very often we have a topic, sometimes we don't. But the thing that is the consistent um, barometer, if you will, of how things are going is that when we get time to show time, it's like, oh, I get to relax. My day has been so crazy. My weekend was so crazy, but I get to relax. I get to have fun. So thank you for being part of my fun. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> And before we got started, uh, we were kind of uh, kicking around you know, what, what we could talk about for a topic, and Luis says he has an incident. So we're going to entitle today's episode, well, at least informally, The Incident. <laughs> so you got to tell us what this incident is all about. Well, Isabel comes home from school, my 13-year-old, and she says to me, Dad, this car almost run me over. I said, what do you mean? She says, at, at the lights. This car went in the wrong lane, overtook everybody, pushed his way into the traffic and, and zooted off. And as you, you know, you weren't expecting to look for a car coming in the wrong direction. You know, she almost um, knocked her over and, you know, she was a bit rattled. <clears throat> so um, I was sitting, uh, I said to her, oh, I remember, was it a white BMW? And she said, yes. I said, I've seen him cut past us on the same thing, you know, when I. Um, when I, when I drive down at the, at the morning time. So, um, today I'm walking Eloise to school, my, uh, six year old. And, um, I see this guy zooting past and lo and behold, he's, um, he gets trapped by all the cars coming you're on the main road with the lights correct and all the rest of it. Uh, so he's stuck. He's stuck there. So I walk up to his roof and I smack <laughs> it. And he opens his window and he looks at me furious. And I said, do you know you almost killed my daughter the other day? And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. and he gets out, you know, all stroppy. Um, big guy, all the rest <clears> of it, um, you know. Uh, not European. I don't know where he was from. He's like a mixed, mixed nation of like me, complete mix of everything. So mm -hmm. he comes up there and he puts his chest against mine, looks me right wow. in the face and I'm totally calm and I'm looking at him in his face and I'm just like, okay, this is what you want to play. Then he starts to play some, um, intellectual game with me. And I said, well, now you're coming on my turf. <laughs> 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 And this grin forms on my face. You know? <laughs> and uh, I say one or two things to him, cuts him to pieces. And then um, he, uh, he, he he goes and gets back in the car because he's stopping all the traffic. You know, he's in the oh, yeah. where he shouldn't be. And everybody has been hooting at him. And mm. probably there's a whole lot of cameras on this whole whole incident. And I've got a, <laughs> I've got a six-year-old on my, on my arm and all the rest. Yeah, that works well, too. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, you know, I'm... I'm very visible and at the lights where there are cameras and all the rest of it. So, you know, he's, he's taking huge chances. And I, I walked around to the back of the car and I, I read back to him his license plate. And he said, Oh, it's not my car. I said, the police will still find you. And he's like, oh. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. And he just drove <laughs> off. He was like, <laughs> But it, there, there was a lot of aspects to it which were fa fascinating for me. One was I wasn't in any way intimidated at all. Um, you know, and I've often said I, li I don't mind emotional conflict at all. <clears throat> so, you know, there's a lot of things you kind of analyze in yourself, how you reacted to the whole thing. Mm, sure. And um, it was really, really interesting. So I said to my, my uh, six-year-old, Eloise, I said, you know, were you scared of the guy? I said, no, no, dad, I was scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, I wasn't angry or, you know, violent or anything. Oh, no, no, you, you were just strong and calm. <laughs> 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 you know, and the other guy picked up on all this. He knew I wasn't going to fight him or argue with him or push him around or do anything. I just stood my ground, looked at him straight deep into his eyes. And that was it. You know, it just knowing that probably everybody's got their camera on the scene and, and you know, this guy's <laughs> going to get away with nothing if he ever did try anything. Um, 
But, you know, it was really, really interesting because, you know, I, and Eloise says, are you going to tell to the police? I said, no, I've even forgotten the, the number. You know, that's not important. And the thing that I was trying to do, and I'm pretty sure I succeeded, is I don't think you're ever going to do it again. You've certainly reduced the chance of it. Very much so. <laughs> no doubt about that. I mean, I, I will never say never because there are some people no, who are course. just, you know, crazy. But um, mm. certainly reduce the chance of it. I mean, he, he mm. now knows he's, he's being, being watched. watched. He also knows that I know exactly what he looks like. <laughs> His mm. face couldn't have been closer to me if he tried. Right. But, um, you know, once you really... And he thinks that you know his friend's license plate. I mean, that's yes. also something, you know. Yeah, yeah. Even if you don't remember, he doesn't know that. <laughs> exactly, you know, and his friend will take the flat for it, you know. Oh, yeah, and his yeah, friend probably won't like that. <laughs> no, absolutely. You won't be much of a friend anymore. You won't have a car anymore. You're right. <laughs> um, but again, you know, none of that was my intent. My intent was was simply to try and reduce the chance of him ever doing it again. Sure. That was it. Yeah. Um, you know, I... And and the, the thing that you'll start understanding with the law of attraction is you protect yourself with your belief. And my belief is really strong enough to be able to stand up in emotional conflict situations and let whatever comes at me flow all over me or around me like a Teflon coat on me and, and just, you know, see things exactly what they are. It's just a man getting out of his car. That's all it is until it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> until it's and, not. <laughs> that's the mm, other shoe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've done kung fu for seven years, so I'm not exactly physically un incapable. Um, that helps. You know, that definitely I, helps. I had Eloise behind me, you know, in a way that was away from him, shielded her. But you know, sure. the guy was not going to do anything in unless I started it, and then oh, he yeah. knew he would have the right. Um, yeah. but you know, I wasn't even thinking about that. There was none, there was no interest in me at all. There was no thought of any violence at all. You know, I was mm. just wanting to make him aware that he almost killed my daughter. That's it. Mm. And he got the message loud and clear. And, <laughs> oh, I'm sure he did. But, um, you know, I'm also not worried about my daughter because I know she has a very positive, strong vibration. So the chances of their car actually hitting her is minimal compared to somebody who's feeling vulnerable. Mm, <clears throat> very good. Very good point. Um, so, you know, I'm not even overly per per perturbed about that. It's, it's just this part of me that just feels that, um, you know, this guy needs to be made aware of what, what he's doing because he races past everybody. I mean, he literally floors this BMW all the mm. way to the lights in the wrong lane. And then he hits this traffic and, you know, I actually admire that. <laughs> you know, I admire somebody who, who takes chances and doesn't obey the rules and the laws very much. I, I, it's not that I have no admiration for that. You know, often I, when I see somebody do that, I wish I wish I'd done that. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> but you know, I don't, I don't obey the law, you know, my, just when my, I was thinking that it was actually a good idea to be on the same road as you. Now I'm not so sure after that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. I just seem to be able to calculate things very, very well. Um, and I, I only break the rule, l rules very, very minorly. Um, mm. but to me, safety of other people, not myself is, is quite important. You know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, I, I can do whatever I want with my own body, but I've got to watch out for others. And I don't really want that on in my mind or, um, in my thoughts. In, Oh, I hurt this person or I damaged this person or I were, you know, I did this. I don't want that. So, you know, I'm, I'm cautious. So I, I do whatever I want to do, but I do it taking responsibility of the outcome. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I should have a thousand speeding tickets in this country. I should have a thousand, <laughs> but I, I've got a full clean license since the day I walked in the door. I have never, ever had anything. Nothing ever, but I should have. <laughs> definitely <laughs> should have. Well, it I also remember... occurs to me this this gentleman that you're you're talking about that you encountered, if he behaves that way every time that he drives through there, up until today, anyway, up mm -hmm. until you know, when this incident occurred, um, that tells me he because we saw what his reaction was, or you saw what his reaction was when he got out of the car. I mean, he was already on nine out of ten. I mean, he, he was already amped up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 
which means he's always amped up. Mm-hmm. It's very, very likely every single day he's amped up and he's angry at everything and like, I demand this and this is mine and blah, 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 blah. He's, he's in this space that quite honestly, I'm kind of surprised he hasn't already hit somebody or something. He actually has managed to not he, hit he anything had, that I had, know about. He had enough control not to do anything with me. He had enough control to come to my level very quickly. In other words, to a calm vibration and not an angry vibration. So that's I mean, walking straight up to my chest is, is, is a form of aggression. It is, you know, and, uh, it, it, it was interesting, but he, he, he's got enough. He's got enough control. He's got a lot of control actually. And I, I admire that, you know, it's just me. I don't look at these things as the way a lot of other people look at these things. Um, and, um, the, the thing that I saw in his eyes was the confusion that I wasn't in any way of uh, feared or worried about him, you know, where he was going to do or anything. The only thing I was, was used to. He, he yeah. was used to a reaction he's used to, like that. He's he used was, to intimidating. And he, yeah. and he wasn't getting that reaction. Yeah. And, you know, I think of this lady in the sauna who said to me, <clears throat> she became a racist because she went out with this white guy and he beat her up. Then she went out with a black guy and he beat her up. And then he went out with another person, another colored, and he beat her up too. And she realized that the problem was herself, you know, and this is the, this is the kind of thing that, that you really need to get to. And, 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 and LOA is the best that I know of helping you actually really understand that is when you change your vibration, you know, nothing can really um, affect you terribly badly. It can, you, you know, if you let it. <laughs> but you now realize you have this choice. You've got this incredible choice now of choosing how you're going to react to a circumstance. You know, if somebody starts beating on you, the way you react instantly will have, a, have an, uh, an effect on how that other person reacts to you. Mm-hmm. So... You know, learning how to control who, who, what you are and your own energies, um, is, I suppose, what I used to use the old words as the word spiritual and in my new words, alignment. Um, how aligned you are and how aligned you can remain through different circumstances. Which takes a lot of practice. I mean, that's not something that you instantly jump into the first time that you hear an Esther Hicks video. No, you need a couple of million lives. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite funny because the last week i felt a bit i've had been like been suffering with a migraine for the last week and i've certainly felt that things have i've not been able to just shrug things off so when you said that earlier that you just would let it flow over you what would be would be mm-hmm. i've been struggling with that this week so i like the fact that this has come up hmm. so you need to learn how to wear your teflon coat yeah. It's a good visualization. You know, yeah. just slides off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember at work once a guy said to me, My God, you got a Teflon coat. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Oh, I like the idea. Yeah, I probably have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never heard it before, but it's it was accurate. <laughs> Cause I go into meetings and I just don't get phased about what anybody did or said or whatever. Um, I learned it very, very early on in the, in the business environment. I was working at PCS 2000, a little computer shop in South Africa. <clears throat> I was just working there part time and, um, one of the bosses from another branch came out and he was English and he took me into a meeting that was with the university because we sold computers to the university. <clears throat> and they started attacking us because of something we weren't doing right or whatever. And I started defending myself and, he, he came to me and he said, Louis, just let them finish. And when they finished, we can respond. And it was just the clarity with which he said it just left a complete mm. mark on me. And now I just let them, you know, get everything out of their system. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really, really helps, you know, just let them pour and pour and pour. And then when they finish, then you can gently and calmly respond. That's an interesting point that you're you're addressing right there because I had an incident. No, I, I shouldn't say that. I didn't have the incident. I became aware of an incident that occurred between actually between two friends of mine, and I, I won't go into the details because it's their stuff. But um, in general, the two of them were not seeing eye to eye on what had happened in the situation. They had different stories, different takes on it. 
And in the process of helping them, um, well, the one was pretty much in a good place, so Mm -hmm. didn't need help. The other person was feeling attacked, so to speak. And so that, that was the person I was trying to help. And with that person, um, I was basically trying to get that person to find a way to let go of what had happened Mm -hmm. to, to let go of, you know, all the stuff this person was hanging on to. And I, I originally started off by just suggesting, can you find a way to forgive this person? Because that's usually the one that people respond to well. Um, in this case, no, it didn't work at all. <laughs> but that was, you know, the first foray. And the person came to back, back to me by saying that uh, essentially, now this is my words, not their words, that they need to uh, go through the whole feeling of the thing. They, have, they need to feel it all the way through, which is a perfectly legitimate way of doing the same thing. Once you let, Once you can feel it all the way through, then... There's nothing left to feel because you felt it all the way through, so you can let go of it. And it made me realize there are lots of ways to let go of things. There are lots of ways to just be that that person with the Teflon coat, so that no matter how much they're sh- they're they're showering you and with all this this junk, I mean the, the the worst comment that can come out of your mouth is, "Wow, there's a that's this is a real mess here on the floor," but it's not on me <laughs> because mm. the perspective is, you know, okay, well, you know, have fun, be have at it, but. You're not going to draw me into that because I just know I'm not going to be part of that energy. And the reason why is I let go of it before you even started it. <laughs> so the letting go piece is really pretty powerful. But what's even more powerful is all the different ways people find to let go. The thing that I like bringing up to people is there's only two ways you can be hurt. I know I've brought it up before. Do you remember, Amory? No, remind me. How, how, how are the only two ways I can hurt you? Well, if I let you. Okay. <laughs> in what, in what way physically, physically and, and emotionally? Physically and physically emotionally. Physically and yeah. mentally. Let's use the word mental instead. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like more things. So what, 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 what do we land up suffering from more, mental or physical? Mental, I'd say. You don't hurt yourself that often, physically. I think I'm not really, no. No, no, most people don't. 99% of the time, the only hurt anybody suffers is psychological slash mental. So what what is happening? You are looking at things in a way that is torturing yourself. Yes. That's all that's happening. Mm Mm-hmm. You hurting me is not the truth. Your thoughts about what you're thinking are hurting you. Yes. And that is when you start understanding some of the greatest advice I think I've ever been given. Somebody said, never look up to somebody and never look down to somebody. Agree with Which that. is a challenge when you're six foot eight, by the way. But I'll, that's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> Trust well. <laughs> <clears throat> so, what, what does that mean? When you're looking up to somebody, you're usually thinking about them, uh, and you're amplifying who they really are. You're not actually seeing them for who they are. You're making them bigger than they actually are. If you started telling them all the things that you think they're great about, great about them, they're going to go like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you're putting them on a pedestal. Why, why did, yeah, why, why don't you just see me as I am and not on the pedestal? Uh, gurus have a big problem with that, but so do any mentors and pop stars and, all, you know, all these guys have got the same, the same issue, the way people perceive them. Um, and then never look down at somebody. If you're looking down at somebody, what are you thinking? You're focusing on what you don't want, like, agree about them. And you're in judgment, aren't you? You're in judgment. So Mm. what does it look like to see somebody as they are? (laughs) We're so used to putting a judgment on it that it's not that easy to actually perceive what it's like to see somebody as they are. Well, this actually actually ties into something we talked about last week. Yeah. I mean, last week we talked about how you... um, I don't remember what the exact context was, but 
I was I was making the point last week that when I learned early on to look past the stuff we tend to apply as stereotypes, you know, gender, race, all that kind of stuff. That's when I got to find out who the real person was. And that's really what you're talking about. Who's the real person that's back there. And what I found is it's pretty damn cool. Mm. I mean, I love, I love the people that I've been able to connect to in that way. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I, I could probably count on one hand, maybe just a few fingers on one hand, the number of people I've encountered who I didn't like at all once I found out who that person was back there. Mo like 99.9% .9 of the time, it's great. So mm. my reaction, my, my response to your question is, where's the problem? It's cool. I love it. I love <laughs> being able to have that kind of connection with somebody. <clears throat> it is great, isn't it? So It is. When, when, when you have a partner for a longer period of time, what happening in the beginning? You're, you're putting your your best persona forward, your best um, – there's a word best for it. Best of yourself. Yeah, there's there's a word for that um, version of yourself. Uh, so you're putting your best foot forward and, 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 you know, over time you get to know who they really are, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so longer relationships are really great. Because what happens over time is you start seeing the person as they are and there's no illusions anymore. Right. And then this real rapport starts, you know, mm -hmm. all the, all yeah. the, all the fake stuff's gone. <clears throat> and now you're dealing with who the person really is. And then you can, then you come to either love them for who they are or you move on. You know? <laughs> so there's always the choice. Um, but digging in and, and, and working with, with, um, a partner is, can be hugely beneficial, hugely beneficial. It hugely beneficial toward appreciating Towards people seeing or... people as they are. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. To not putting them on a pedestal and not looking down at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I can list so many things that I respect and love about my wife. You know, and those are the only things I focus on. I don't think about the rest. And she feels that. She knows that. She knows I'm only looking at those things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. and she, she still finds the picky things now and again for me, but you know, it's okay. I love that too. You know, it's <laughs> the way it is. So, <clears throat> um, you know, I really think relationships can be enhanced massively if you just see people for who they are. Oh, yeah. Make no judgment, you know, and just, oh. You can just start off. They're a man or they're a woman. You know, <laughs> don't have to, don't have to go too far. <laughs> they're alive. No, <laughs> no, you don't have to go too far. In fact, mm. the way I I experience it is, it's, it, it. What's the word I'm looking for? It's anticipation. Like I can't wait to find out who this person really is because mm. I've had so many positive experiences when I was able to get through all of the facade stuff mm -hmm. that. You know, it, the odds of me encountering somebody who I wouldn't like are so astronomical that it, it, it doesn't even seem to be part of my conscious awareness. So every single time, I'm expecting to find a really cool person back there. I can't wait to find out who it is. Mm. It's exciting. That That's a very LOA thing. You get so excited about meeting up at this meeting or going to this, this uh, the club and, you know, who am I going to meet and chat to again, you know. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. You know, there's so many fascinating people out there. And if you're in alignment, you bring them, you bring the people to you that are in alignment and you can have a really aligned chat yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and see people for what they are and, and allow them to, you know, learn from you and then you know, vice versa and, and have this game and this, this, this play going on of seeing people as they really are. You know, I get people telling me about their periods and, their, you know, this lady who died, whose, whose friend died on the same day she was in the sauna, you know, she opened up mm. to me and cried in the sauna. You know, I get, I get a lot of that stuff, um, all the time. And it, to me, there's no judgment. You know, mm -hmm. you had a period, didn't have a period, your friend died, didn't die. You know, it, it doesn't phase me. I just see it for what it is, recognize it and I move on and people see something in that i'm not quite sure exactly how it all works but i see something in that where they, they know they can just continue opening up and just letting go you know 
I'm not getting well, paid in the sauna. I think I can explain it. I can explain mm. why you get the reaction that you do. It's pretty straightforward. You don't address and in some way evaluate the thing, whatever the thing is. Mm. You just respond to the human. And it's a yeah. human response. It's, there, there's, like you said, there's no judgment attached. <clears throat> there's no, there's no, well, here's what I would do. There's no, you know, there, there, there's nothing like that attached. It's just, I see you. I, I experience mm. you. I respond to you. You are the person that I am interacting with. And mm. I appreciate that. And that's not a common experience. It's mm-hmm. becoming more common, but among humanity, in our world anyway, yeah. <laughs> but more and more people are beginning to, to encounter it. So that's great. But for the vast majority of population, most of the exchanges that they have with people have this stuff that's in the way. The stuff is, well, it's the event that is important. It's the, the, uh, the, the, it's the thing that was done that is important. It's the, um, it's the, the crazy topic that's important. It's, it's, it's anything but the human being. Mm. And that's what leads us astray because we keep thinking about everything but the mo- one most important part of the conversation, which is the person that you're talking with. Mm. But also before that, I think you're doing something that isn't actually done that often in your listening. Oh, yeah. It's not everybody listens. They'd say they are, but then not necessarily uh, are. I thought I talked a lot. Then, right? <laughs> you have as many conversations as Louis has. You're going to talk a lot and you're going to listen a lot. It's good to be both. They're obviously feeling heard as well and feeling validated. Hmm. And hmm. I remember my, my brother had that power and he abused it quite well. Um, <laughs> woman, woman fell at his feet everywhere. You know, he was an excellent listener and he started doing it with me when he came stayed with me if he had just got divorced and moved out from south africa and lived with me in london and um for what six three to six months or something and um during that period i went and i chatted to him and i just found myself verbally diarrhea my mind unfiltered i was spewing mm-hmm. out uh, at him and then suddenly i realized oh my god he is a good listener Mm-hmm. And I, and, and he is not using that power correctly. We had a chat about it. And after that day, he never abused it anymore, ever from t- till today. I've never seen him with anybody. He took it on board, understood what he was doing, was aware enough, and he changed the way he behaved. And but when you say he abused, what do you mean he abused it? Yeah. Um, when you learn you have a power like this, I did it to my mother. I just walked up to her and just the way I looked at her or something and she started crying and I wasn't doing anything. I was literally doing nothing, but I, I had discovered something, some, something energetic, I imagine. And it went on for weeks and eventually dad walked into my room and he said, Louis, you know what you're doing to mom and I know what you're doing to mom. If you don't stop, you're going to have me to deal with. And I stopped. Okay. But I don't know what I was doing today. Nobody can say what I was doing. I wasn't doing anything. But dad understood on some level that I was doing this and, and, um, I was abusing something, which I don't quite know what it was. Um, but when you become fully aware of it, and my dad made me highly aware of what I was doing, I mean, I was aware that mom was crying and I was, I had something to do with it, but even I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I wasn't actually doing anything. So <clears throat> it it's just interesting, you know, he, you know, a very good listener can, can abuse that power. It's just the way it is. You can get just people to open up, open up, open up, and you can take that information and, and use it against them on whatever. I don't know. I can't think how you can do it, but just, just yeah, having manipulators. Them. That's, that's the thought that kept going through my mind. Somebody mm. who's manipulating somebody else. But I don't think he did actually do much manipulation with the information at all in, in any stage. But, um, it definitely feels much better now than then. Mm. So energetically, I appreciate what he did to change. Um, I'm sure my mom appreciated what I did to change. Not that I know what I did, <laughs> or what I did to change. <clears throat> 
Um, so, you know, there, there's, there's, there's games that we play and some of us are damn good at them and none of them necessarily involve any, any words or. Well, I think the word that applies is intent or intention. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we talked about I was about getting so annoyed with my mother. I really was because. So that I was coming through. Anything somewhere. right. I mean, we'll just never ever do anything right. And it was really annoying. Um, I remember her calling me and I stood in front of her completely resigned saying, what have I done wrong now? And she said, there's a bowl for you to lick out. You know, when she was baking, she left the bowls for me to lick out and I love doing it. I was like, Oh, <laughs> so shocked. I didn't do something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but that left a marked impression on my mind at how often she must have been saying I was doing mm. something wrong, doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's something I have not done with my kids. Um, I almost say to them, you know, disagree with me, argue with me. My six-year-old is throwing my own philosophy back at me last night. <laughs> <laughs> so perfectly. So, like, stop coughing. She's got this terrible cough, and the way she coughs sounds terrible. It's like, and she she really amplifies it and exaggerates it. So uh, I say, stop doing that, you know. And she says, well, that's your problem, Daddy. Deal with it. <laughs> As you know, I can only praise her for it. I said, well, I can, but ask. <laughs> Louis, you've got this amazing energetical power to make her cry every time you see her. Use it. <laughs> ah, the manipulative oh. side. Okay. <laughs> Oh, those, those, those days of those kind of games are long gone. Yeah. <laughs> they are so well, there's an, there's, there's another word that comes to my mind too, besides intent, although intention I think covers quite a bit of it. And that's inference. Because there's actually two people involved in any of these exchanges. Mm. There's the one person who is supposedly in some way passing along bad energy and it's some kind that we haven't been able to define. And then there's the other person who's inferring that bad energy is being passed along. And so the, the part of the question becomes, okay, so how much of this is, is real in the sense that it's actually happening? How much of it is inferred? Mm. Now that can be a fine thing to try to define. I mean, a lot of the time, I'll bet you people can't even say, well, I, I don't even know what the inference was. Or was there an inference? I don't even know. You see, the clarity I got from LOA was if you focus on what you want, the universal law of attraction will bring the cooperative components to you. Therefore, there's no reason to manipulate anybody ever. True. It completely goes out the door, out the window. There's no need to manipulate. So... You really get that, you know, you really start getting that and you think, hmm, wow, all those little games I played, what a waste of energy. Mm. I really wasted my energy. I'm not doing that anymore. I've got too little time and too, too many things that I want to achieve to waste my energy on manipulating somebody to get that, you know, but until you understand the law of attraction, you don't fully get that. You don't think you don't get how it works. You still think for somebody to win, somebody has to lose. Mm -hmm. You don't that's see at the... source energy as having an, a, a limitless potential that yeah, can get the... you from that's any a... different angle. That's at the root of the idea of abundance, that, that it's the universe that we live in is an abundant mm -hmm. universe. Poverty consciousness. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. There isn't enough abundance consciousness. There is unlimited. Yeah. And the funny and thing really, is we can actually, we can actually understand that concept and still have the poverty lack consciousness. Hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there, there's, there's what you say and what you mean are two different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or more accurately, um, what you're thinking in your mind and what you're actually vibrating um, in your being varies. I want that big house, but I'm not a vibrational match to it yet. So, you know. You, yeah, we call really that alignment, but it's, that but, but it's really congruence. Congruence mm. between the vibration and the thought and the feeling. But we, like you say, we humans are very good at... at <laughs> 
basically putting out false signals is, is a way to look at it. On the one hand, we vibrate this way. On the other hand, we think this way. And on the third hand, third hand, we emote this way. <laughs> Well, who knows? We're growing a third hand. I mean, Abraham has said it's possible. We just didn't believe it to this point. But <laughs> high five. <laughs> Where's that other hand? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and for me, sometimes I feel like I'm aligned with things. I think, yay, I've got it. I'm aligned with it. And then the next day, it just feels like it's gone again. And I'm like, where did it go? I need it back. And well, the law of attraction, lovers. You are like so many other people out there. <laughs> I know. I want to be. But she's like not you. a novice. That's the point. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. There, there are people, including I'll include myself in this. We're still learning that congruence. We're still learning Absolutely. how to be congruent within ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but she, she, what, she, what I was pointing to is that a lot of people in that position, when they look at LOA, they start, they look at it, they think it is all simple and glory, and they're going to get what they want. Um, and yeah. then the reality check kicks in and they realize one of two things. One is law of attractions BS. And the other thing is that they are, they really understand that they're not vibrating what they want. They're not actually which, being what they want, which is annoying, by the way. No, it's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> You can have your belief. I'll have mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fact that I still feel find it to be annoying shows that I still have an annoyance going on there. So, yeah, that's Absolutely. pretty straightforward, that's really. All, that's why I say you can keep your, your, your thinkings and I'll keep mine and we'll continue. <laughs> mm. And people will see me as arrogant, forward, maybe, and, or, or they'll see me as confident. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it'll be what it'll be. Yes, it is. It always is. I guess what the, the thought that was going through my mind is that I was addressing the whole idea of intent and inference was that a, the way a lot of these things play out, whether we're talking about an, an intention or just inferring from somebody else's behavior or whatever, the bottom line comes down to really a very simple question, I guess. And the question is, how do I really feel? What's really going on inside? How in and tune Marie, am I with what, you, what's going on with me? And Marie, do you see you see Walt's flashing there? Huh? Wow. You see? He, he was going lighter and darker, lighter and darker. See ya. There we go. Yes. We oh, go. my gosh. Yes, I see it now. Oh. That, that, that's my alignment going in and out. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's an ongoing issue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so funny. <laughs> but it's true, though, because that, that whole question of alignment and uh, what I'm calling congruence, I mean, it, 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 it takes some doing to get there. And then we yeah, think we've does, gotten yeah. there to a certain degree. And we're right. We, are, have, we have gotten there to a certain degree. And then we find that there was a little piece that we were overlooking, and that was the part that wasn't congruent or wasn't in alignment. Mm -hmm. And so we're constantly making adjustments, trying to bring it all into um, into alignment. Um, so what I, I what I keep coming back to in my own mind is I need simplicity. I need a, a simple way to just kind of. <laughs> overcome the fact that it feels like I'm dealing with so many different moving parts because if you get enough moving parts going on, all you're doing is chasing moving parts all the time. So what's the simplest way to do that? And I keep coming back to the same answer over and over again. It's what we subtitle the show, your daily dose of happy. What's it going to take to feel better? So think of the eye of the storm, Walt. Okay. And the center of the storm will be alignment. And then the further you go out, the more you're going to get thrown around the place. So the idea is to find that alignment, and some people call it spirituality, um, etc. And that the concept is <clears throat> looking for the non-physical. 
a spiritual being or somebody who's looking to be spiritual is looking more for some some part of them they're looking for that part of themselves that is that that is non-physical that is that can't be seen touched felt smelt um but somehow or other is perceived to be there and that is that is that is the journey so when when you when you get to that level of not wanting the house car job partner and you're now looking for the inner peace and happiness that can still have all the others but the goal now is not for external things anymore it's mm-hmm. now for that richness of the internal now i was talking to amory and you <clears throat> after the show about how fascinating my life was and i was going through it and marie was even getting bored and left me um <laughs> after you left me um but uh, you know i've got this had this incredible incredible life and um i was wondering why have i had it and not others because i've spoken to many 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 other people and once, once i finished my story they they and i said how's your life and they said i can't say anything because you know yours has just been so amazing mine's just um doesn't doesn't compare so i was wondering why it is like that and it's been really haunting me and i've realized that <clears throat> Even from the young age, from the age of eight, as I've mentioned many, many times, I've said to mom, what is truth, love and God about? I was searching for my inner, for my spiritual side from a young, young age. And that, I think, is the key ingredient if somebody wants to have a really exciting life. I think that's true. I think there's also something in in a phrase you used, and I, I think you were actually kind of using it as a throwaway phrase, but it's actually pretty insightful. And that is, you can't compare. Mm-hmm. They don't compare. No, you well, can't compare. You can't. There's no way to compare them. It can't. I don't care what what kind of life you think it, that the other person might have had. There's no way to compare them. No, you it's can't. It's not possible to compare your own life to somebody else's life. You can try to. You can drive yourself crazy in the process, but. In the end, there there is no comparison, except soul equals soul. Does it or doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure what <laughs> equals means in that context. Yeah. So what, what I'm going to say is what what we're all ultimately source energy, mm-hmm. and that of course is all equal. Is it? Is it? Maybe. Maybe not. I, I'm not so sure. As, you, as you a need whole. To say that. I don't know. I mean, of course, I. I, I mean, the reason I, the reason I would say that, that that it's not equal is that, and this is what I got from the stream. One of the conversations we had with the stream, the stream mm. basically confirmed for me that um, energy is constantly expanding; it's constantly increasing in quantity. Mm-hmm. So, if it's constantly increasing, how can it be equal? Okay, could it be equal at any moment in time? At an instant hmm. is what you're driving at. Mm-hmm. Equal to itself, I suppose. Yeah. But equal, but but equal in any other sense starts to fall apart. Well, in the next moment, it's equal again, and the next moment, it's equal again. I don't know. But, I but, mean, we're living but, in a linear but, time frame. But the, so. but the three the three equivalences <clears throat> aren't equivalent to each other. They're just equivalent within themselves. Mm. Yeah. So once again, I ask, what does it mean to be equal? <laughs> because yeah, no, point, I mean, it's just something once, kind of falling apart. somebody <laughs> once said to me, soul equals soul, and some of it, it kind of resonated with me. Um, but so I don't know. But if you're asking, like, is it equal or unequal, are you not comparing? Hmm. And really, I you agree. should just be yeah. worried about your own. So, Louis... Hmm. People watching who want to be more spiritual and get in contact with their inner source, be more spiritual yes. in themselves. Yes. What what tricks of the trade would you say to start doing that? What, what, what I taught you to do already. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no, no, you specifically. For me, so for me, it's you've taught me to. The judgment, the fill your glass with the positivity, appreciation, things come along that you perceive as bad or you appreciate it. 
whatever it is, find something, appreciate, mm-hmm. let that grow and attract. Um, stuff you put in your body. Surely there's more, but you feel under pressure of your stare. <laughs> <laughs> Water. Yes. Putting your body. It becomes <laughs> to to chest with you. I mean, this is really a rough situation, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Anne-Marie, I, I brought in the water and you took it on board. And yes. And you do not, uh, I don't think you appreciate how much that'll help your spiritual journey. Mm. It's massive. It's massive. It is, it is now, your body's 72% water mostly. And you're now working with a higher vibration that you're putting in. And <clears throat> you're now tuning yourself. And, and you're getting ready to be ready to be ready as Abram keeps on putting, putting it. So mm-hmm. you, you're, you're enhancing it. So you've, ch- you've helped focus more on what you want, less on what you don't want. That's going to immediately change masses amount. You yeah. appreciate negativity. It's fantastic. You know, when, you know, when you realize it's an expansion tool and it's not neg- negative in any, in the way you used to perceive it and you don't focus on that aspect very much. Um, you know, that's huge. When you're putting water in your body, when you're surrounded, Surrounding your, your, yourself with, <clears throat> um, gemstones and other things that, that you feel really aligned to, you know, um, even the way you put up the pictures on the wall, you start, you start looking where you sit in your house, you know, you, you start working on a very different level. You start intuiting and feeling it, you know, walking. I'm starting to see wind now that I tell you. No. I'm literally starting to see the wind. I told you I started to see the energy of my body, but now I'm starting mm-hmm. to see the wind. And it's beautiful. It's very mesmeric. I mean, the, the swirling and the way it moves is just really, it's fantastic. So you just go on nature and plant your feet in the ground. You earth yourself. And that all starts helping with your alignment. So there's so many things you can do. Every time you see it, a tree, you put your hands together and you say, ah, oh, wood, oh, air, oh, light, oh, metal, you know, all the five, the five elements. And you're always recognizing in the earth, um, fire, water, you know, looking up at the sun and, and there's this appreciation. And then you start getting the connectedness between everything. And it's a journey. It's taken me years to get to where I am and I don't even feel I've started, you know, compared to, again, I always refer to the people that I (laughs) probably admire the most on this planet from that dimension is the yogis, the advanced spiritual yogis, not the endless amount of fake gurus out there, the real yogis. Um, They have their control of their body, of their mind, um, is on a dimension which blows you apart. They can focus on a hundred things consciously at once, some more. You know, if you can even do two at once, you're pretty brilliant. But these guys work them way up to a hundred and to a thousand. Um, you know, they can, tr- they can contract and release every single organ in the body. So they can, they can massage their own heart. They can slow their heart down. They can speed it up. They can take the kidney and, and massage it with their mind. You know, you can go on and on and on about the things that you can start doing. I've got a a lot of control of my body, but it's nowhere near what these guys have done. You know, it just doesn't even scratch the surface. Um, So you you start looking at life very, very differently. And I really like the question. And there's so many dimensions. And I will think about more and more things that that you can implement. But... um, the main thing is the awareness, you know, and it always comes down to awareness. And what is awareness? Awareness of your water. You know, what is the ideal way of drinking water? It's going to a stream, putting your hands in, touching the water and putting it to your face. That is the ideal. And then where am I now? I've got my copper jug. I've spilled it. I've spilled it in my little vortex, which looks like a river. Um, I put my finger in it to charge it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've drunken it. So, you know, I'm trying to get back to as close as I can mm-hmm. to that natural vibration of who we are and where we are and what we're doing, where we're going. Um, because 
you know, this woman who discovered <clears throat> the whole thing, this, um, uh, vegetarian myth. What she discovered in all of that was how things work together on this planet. She said, we're so screwed the way we have humans have thought of ourselves as at the pinnacle. Yet, if you removed every insect in the world, <clears throat> 20 years and humanity's dead. If you removed the worms in the world, eight years and the humans are dead. So who's reliance on who? And if the humans died tomorrow, the world would thrive. Yes. Would absolutely thrive. So you start seeing that there's a cycle going on here and you want to become more in tune with it. How do you do that? How do you do that? So you start getting back to the basics, you know. Um, you will see many of the Eastern philosophies and I was completely blanked by this. I never got it. I really never got it. There was many, many book I read as a youth on my mentor's bookshelves about the five elements and what they meant. Only now am I starting to understand the incredible importance of the earth. You know how much I am about soil and blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm starting to get, I, I've been through the whole thing of water. You know, I've talked about water in, on, on numerous occasions in numerous different ways. I've talked about breathing because I had asthma. So breath has been incredibly important to me. So I've learned a lot about breath, a lot about water. I'm now going into the earth. <clears throat> And I've always been a fire person. I've always been fired up. My, my daughter's always touching me and sitting on me and all the rest of it. And my wife, because I'm warm, I'm always warm. I'm always hot. So I'm, there, there's this fire that lives inside me that, um, <clears throat> that, um, so, so there's fire, water, earth, air. Um, and then you start seeing how they all fit together. And then you start seeing how alignment fits into all of that the Abram Hicks teaching of alignment. And, um, you know, the more you become in harmony with these, the more aligned you are, the more aligned you are, the more incredible things you're going to manifest and do in your life. <laughs> this one guru was saying, you know, I'm not one of those gurus who goes and sits and meditates all his life. <clears throat> I work like 16 hours every day. And I get very little sleep. And I do that every day, every year for the last 16 years. And he says, that, that is a feat. And I'm excited and I'm happy and I'm not depressed and I'm not angry and I'm not frustrated. He says, that, that is a goal. Yeah. When a lot of us are thinking about, you know, making a little more money here or doing this or getting that where we, we're not seeing the big picture. Um, well, it could be the big picture for us at that moment in time, but um, where I'm at now, I'm really looking at, you know, how to align myself in every different shape and form. I think that's the important point in that little story you just told there, that, because it's easy to take away from that story the idea that the important point is that he, he was joyfully working 16 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that working 16 hours a day was the answer, but really that wasn't what the story was about. What the story was about was that he had got into alignment and through his alignment, he had found appreciation mm -hmm. in the 16 hours mm -hmm. he was working each day. It wasn't well, the 16 hours. He was doing hours, something he loved. He, it wasn't he work. Did. Yeah. It wasn't work. Yeah. So exactly. <clears throat> and he said a lot of people are now doing this. And he says a lot of the people he works with are doing this and. They never take holidays. They never go anywhere. They never do anything, but they have an incredibly exciting and rich life with amazing experiences. Mm -hmm. And I fully appreciate and understand that. Well, thank you. I needed Please. to hear that. And I'm going to save this episode to watch again. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I well, need to top and, up. <laughs> and the key there is the appreciation piece, because mm. I mean, I, I've, I've certainly worked the other side of that street working the 16 hour days and so forth, but I wasn't enjoying it. It wasn't fun. It wasn't interesting. It wasn't full. It was rich. It, it wasn't any of those things. From my perspective, it, it was to sum it up, sum it up in a word. It was drudgery. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
And th- so the key piece to that is how do you see, think, feel, perceive, there's probably another adjective or adverb in there somewhere, the thing that you're doing. Mm. How do how how do you interact with that, whatever that is, fill in the blank? And I still create a lot of contrast for myself, and it's not necessary. It's like my mentor says, looking for truth in dustbins. But you know, my game playing really winds me up, or I allow it to wind me up, and I'm I'm learning to gain a greater and greater control of that. But it's really tricky. So <clears throat> instead of going out to a job nine to five and getting people to wind me up and my boss and everybody, um, I, I literally wind myself up, um, and then learn to control it and see how fast I can, I can align myself again. So I'm playing with the contrast all the time. So I'm, I'm not seeing it as negative. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing this as, is, is my way of challenging myself. I mean, there's, there's a much better ways I should be putting my efforts <laughs> definitely for, for, for some of those hours I play, but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a journey. You know, I had to go to my tenant's property tonight because she had a mouse problem and she was literally one of these people who stand on her chairs and she says, I said, but it's in your mind, you know? Oh no, it's not in my mind. I said, where is it then? Crawling the floor the carpet. Where do you think it is? <laughs> no, I wasn't talking about. I wasn't talking about the mouse. I was talking about the fear of the mouse. <clears throat> and uh, she eventually got it, but it's very difficult for her. She's totally, totally um, given a mouse and its movement, uh, the way she puts it just destroys her world, you know, her, her mental world it completely destroys it. And uh, I walk in there and I'm completely calm and focused and clear and I couldn't care if her mouse came out and kissed me and it just didn't make any difference to me, you know. And, I'd be um, amazed if the mouse did that actually, but that's another story. <laughs> but, 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 but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm maintaining the alignment of no fear from mouse whatsoever. I'm saying feed off it. You know, grab it if you can. Feed off it. Either stay where you are or come where I am at. Stay where you are, come where I'm at. And so that that is what somebody who understands the law of attraction does. They they maintain the alignment as as Abram Hicks always said, your source is never gonna come down to your level and say, Oh, I'm so sorry, it's so terrible in your life. It's never gonna do that. It's I'm happy up here, I'm happy up here, you come up here, you come up here, I'm gonna have you, you come up here. So <clears throat> Um, it's, it, it's what I do. You know, I just show her that I've got absolutely no fear of it because I literally haven't. My vibration is clean when it comes to mice. <laughs> um, so I'm letting her feed off that if she wants to, if she's aware enough, if she's able to, um, that's what a good healer does. A good healer, the healer knows. I see we've got about 30 seconds. <clears throat> A good healer has their own strong alignment and you go to them for that alignment more than any tablet or medication or, you know, cracking of the spine or whatever they do to you. You're going there for their alignment. And when you get that, you really start understanding how things work, really work. It's funny because I've been doing this program now for nine and a half years. Is it nine and 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 a half? It's nine and a half, yeah. And in that time, one of the main topics I've been trying to learn more and more about, talk about is alignment. And I know it a whole lot better than I did nine and a half years ago. And I feel very much like, uh, was it Socrates who said, I still don't know anything. (laughs) That's the way it feels a lot of the time. (laughs) And Marie, wasn't it funny how Walt's voice went all crackly when he said that? Yeah. Yeah. It went all squeaky. (laughs) (laughs) I squeaked. (laughs) And look, it stopped now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My mentor always made me very aware of these things. She said, Louis, you're laughing. It must be true. (laughs) It must be true. (laughs) (laughs) She was so funny. Oh, but this has been good. And it has actually accomplished the goal that I set out at the, uh, as an intention at the very beginning of the show, which was to 
have a way to go, oh, I get to relax and enjoy myself for a time. Mm-hmm. And I have. So thank you very Excellent. much for being part thank of my you, enjoyment. Well, I like that a whole lot. And, and thank you to, and thank you to the podcast listeners. Absolutely. And Wherever you are. <laughs> and, and, and what was that? Hi, Sam. Sam Page. Oh, and hi, Sam. That's right. Yes, Sam was, Sam. In, was commenting. Hello, Sam. <laughs> all right. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Take care. Good night.